What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'll be showing you another fantastic appetizer idea. This is my recipe for fried salmon bites. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. Here we have three fillets of salmon, it's about a pound and a half total. I like to leave the skin on because I enjoy the salmon skin, but if you do not like the skin, ask your butcher to remove it or just purchase it without the skin on there. Now you wanna take a nice sharp knife and slice these into bite-sized chunks. You wanna make sure that these are all equal in size, that way they cook at the same rate. There we go. And we're going down with a nice simple all-purpose seasoning on this. We'll be using some salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Just a nice coat on both sides. Don't go too crazy on the salt here because the honey ginger sauce that we're gonna make in a few minutes uh, has quite a bit of sodium in it, so no need to go too crazy on the seasoning. Just make sure they're all nicely coated like you see me doing right here. This recipe is fantastic, guys. I gotta be honest, when I first saw fried salmon on the internet, I wasn't a big fan of it, uh, but when I tried it, it made me a believer. So I'm man enough to admit that I was wrong, and you guys are gonna love this recipe. So now we're going in with a half quart of buttermilk into a mixing bowl and about two to three tablespoons of your favorite hot sauce or whatever you got in the pantry. The buttermilk brine is gonna do two things. It's gonna add a little bit of acidity to the dish. It's also gonna help our breading stick to the fish nicely. That way you have a nice crunchy piece of fried salmon and who doesn't like crispy fried fish? So go ahead and take your salmon chunks and place it into that buttermilk bath and let it soak for about 30 to 60 minutes. You don't have to do this for too long. Salmon's already pretty tender, so it's not like we're trying to tenderize the fish here. Just get in there with your hands, make sure they're all well coated and submerged in that buttermilk. And then you can wrap it up and place it on the counter or in the fridge for about 30 to 45 minutes, up to an hour. Don't need to go much longer than that. Next, we're gonna make our honey ginger sauce. So we're going in with two tablespoons of oyster sauce. If you're not a fan of this stuff, you can replace it with hoisin sauce as well. I do like it for this recipe though, so I would recommend giving it a try before you bail on it. Then we're going in with a quarter teaspoon of sesame oil, maybe a little bit less. Sesame oil packs a big punch, guys, so just, you know, add just a little bit at a time. Next, we're going in with one fourth cup of soy sauce. If you're trying to watch your sodium intake, you can use the low sodium variety followed by one fourth cup of honey. Guys, this sauce is good on everything. I, I put it on the salmon, I put it on lamb chops, I put it on chicken wings, never fails. Going in with one and a half tablespoons of ginger, followed by one tablespoon of garlic. And that's all the ingredients for the sauce, guys. Just break out the whisk, mix everything until it's well combined. Taste as you go, adjust the flavor profile to your preference but this one's pretty rock solid. Looking good. Next, we're gonna make our spicy aioli by adding a fourth cup of mayonnaise to a mixing bowl. Followed by one to two tablespoons of horseradish, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon of sriracha. And then finally, we're going in with three to four tablespoons of ketchup. Depending on how sweet you want the sauce to be, the ketchup uh, adds a little color and it offsets the spice from the sriracha and the horseradish. So just taste as you go and adjust it to your preference as always. Going in with just a pinch of salt and pepper. And you have yourselves a nice aioli. This is a good dipping sauce for your salmon. Really, you can use this aioli for a number of different things. I like to add it on my blackened chicken and other recipes as well. There we go. Not one, but two sauces for you guys today. Next, we're gonna make our breading. So we're going in with one cup of yellow cornmeal, and I'm using yellow here for the color that's gonna add when we fry it up, and one cup of all-purpose flour. Keeping it nice and simple. The cornmeal and flour mixture is really nice on this salmon, so give it a try. We're gonna season this with a little adobo, some salt and pepper. Again, guys, season to taste. I recommend tasting your flour. That way you can make sure that it's adequately seasoned. It wouldn't be a video for me if we didn't include a little Old Bay. Get in there with a fork or a whisk and mix everything to combine. 
Again, I'm a big advocate of tasting your flour before adding the fish to it. That way you know that it's adequately seasoned. Otherwise, you're just guessing. Want to make sure that they're nicely coated. Not too heavy though. So kind of like you see right here, just a nice even coat of that breading. Place them on a wire rack or a plate for about 10 to 15 minutes while your oil is coming up to temperature. That way the flour really adheres to the meat. Give you a nice crispy piece of salmon. Going in with about a half gallon of peanut oil or vegetable oil, we want to get that oil up to 350 degrees, which is the perfect temperature for frying fish or chicken in my opinion, most things really. There we go, it's game time. Don't overcrowd your fryer. Place those salmon chunks in there nicely. Doesn't really take that long for these to cook, probably six to nine minutes depending on how large they are. You wanna cook your salmon to about 135 to 140 degrees internal temperature. Wanna make sure they're nice and golden brown also. Get in there and move them around a bit. Make sure they're not sticking together or sticking to the bottom of your skillet. You don't want anything to burn. We're about halfway done at this point. You guys can say it with me, looking good. Just keep moving them around. We can go ahead and check them for temperature at this point. Got some nice color on there. Let me know in the comments if you ever had fried salmon. Also, let me know what sauce you're excited to try out of these two that we're showing today. Once they're done and nice and golden brown and crispy, we're gonna remove them to a wire rack to let them drain. Don't put them on a paper towel because the paper towel will absorb that oil and end up uh, making your fish soggy. We wanna we want keep them nice and crispy. Now it's time for a little food pour. We're gonna give these a toss in that honey ginger sauce. So add them to a mixing bowl, pour your sauce over top. Warming the sauce beforehand is a good idea. That way you keep everything nice and warm. Give them a little toss. Oh man, that looks good. I can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. There we go. Make sure they're nice and evenly coated in that sauce and then we're gonna plate them up. Give you guys a little trademark money shot here in a second. I like to garnish these with a little diced green onion and some toasted sesame seeds, but that's totally optional up to you guys. And the green onion for a little pop of color, plus green onion goes well with Asian flavors. Man, that looks good. Another little trademark money shot. Little chopped parsley for the fried salmon. You know I gotta try these. Let me know in the comments which one you think tastes better. We're about to find out right now. I think I'll start with one of these honey ginger. Look at how moist and flaky the fish is. Looks so nice, we gotta run it back. All right, time for the taste test. Oh man. <laughs> you can really see it on my face on that one. No acting involved here, guys. All right, let's try the other one. Give it a nice dunk in that sauce. Make sure you get some on your lip to embarrass yourself on the YouTube. Nice job. All right, guys, that's my recipe for fried salmon bites. Let me know in the comments what you think. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.